blood pressure is generally how hard your heart is pushing the blood around your circulation system. The harder it pushes your blood, the higher your pressure is. Just like when a balloon or anything else is at too high a pressure, it may find a weak spot, whatever's constraining it, and pop, it bursts. The air in the balloon breaks through whatever's containing it, or in this case, the blood and your cell walls. With blood pressure, this can result in a stroke, heart attack, kidney disease, or even blindness. But when blood pressures are actually measured, two numbers are normally given, which are the diastolic, which is the lower number, and the systolic, which is the higher number. What these numbers represent is the high level of pressure when the heart is squeezing out the blood, and the low level of pressure of the blood vessels in between heartbeats. The difference tells us how much the, the balloon of your blood vessels starts to stretch from the lowest pressure to highest pressure. A very high systolic number is always going to give you high blood pressure, since the balloon has a certain upper design limit no matter what your diastolic number might be. But if your systolic number is quite low, then the diastolic number is the key to seeing if your blood vessels are under constant strain or do they get a brief period of recovery. So you may have a blood pressure reading which is say 100 over 70, which is healthy, but generally any reading of systolic pressure over 140 is high blood pressure. So what's going on in the body to cause this change in blood pressure? One of the key issues is salt. The kidneys filter your blood pressure by a process called osmosis, where liquid moves from a low salt area to a high salt area. By having too much salt in your diet, you alter this balance. This in turn means that your kidneys don't remove as much water from the blood as they should, so your heart is pushing a lot more watery blood around, which in turn means it needs to push harder to get the same amount of substances in your bloodstream around your body to maintain a healthy working body. The other keys to blood pressure are the ones normally associated with staying healthy, such as exercise, eating fruit and vegetables, not smoking or drinking too much. These will counter some of the effects of the salt, especially if you have a good level of potassium in your diet. These steps may also reduce the amount of choke points in your system, where the blood vessels narrow so that the blood will have to push past to get through. Some people may be given medicines to help with blood pressure, but these are not cures, since blood pressure isn't a disease in the common meaning of the term. If you take them for a while and your blood pressure returns to normal, and you don't change your lifestyle, coming off them will mean that your blood pressure returns to where it was. These medicines may widen your blood vessels, consequently lowering the pressure by reducing the amount of liquid in your bloodstream, again lowering the pressure. A way to avoid having to take these for the rest of your life is to take steps early on to avoid high blood pressure in later life. So that's blood pressure. Hope it's useful for you.